Oh, warning! This fanfiction contains infantilism. If you're creeped out by this fetish, please leave now before I punch your house in half. This is a fanfiction by Shanatan213. The fanfiction's name is World of Dreams. Chapter 3, Mo Madness. Okay, it's time to... Time to... No, wait, whoa! Ha! Oh, God! Okay. Alright, alright, alright. Ow. Okay, I'm thinking here. Okay, okay. Let's get ready. Hello, is anyone there? A pink-haired girl called out. She was tall with excellent proportions and a large bust to match. She was all... Ah, and she also wears glasses. Where am I? And how did I get to this strange place? She walked around and saw nothing in every direction. She looked around frantically for any signs of civilization, but found none. The girl decided to pick a direction and continued to walk forward. She <laughs> Harrison Ford? What are you doing here? She walked for a full ten min minutes until she saw a door floating in mid-air and examined it. <laughs> The girl finally opened the door and went through it. The room she entered was filled with video game councils <laughs> and stacked and stacks of games just thrown on the floor. Damn it, why can't I beat the, this first boss when I have the difficulty settings on super easy? A voice shouted from across the room. The pink-haired girl followed the sounds of the cursing voice until she found its source. It was another girl playing a video game. Her she was she bleh. she has tan skin, slightly slanted eyes brown hair that went down on her shoulders, brown slash gold eyes, and had a small fang on the side of her mouth, she noticed Miyuki standing behind her. So I see, not only you made it to this world, but you found my door also. Congrats, Miss Miyuki Takara, she said, still tapping away on the controller looking without looking back at Miyuki. Damn it, that was my last life, she cursed again, throwing the controller on the floor. Excuse me, I'm terribly sorry to interrupt you while you're playing your game, but can you please tell me how to get home? Miyuki asked. She turned. The girl turned around and faced Miyuki. Miyuki knew the girl. You're one of the Haragi San's friends from class, right? Let's see. Your name is Misao Kusakabi. Am I right? Miyuki asked. Let's just say that Hiragi is someone special to me, but some blue-haired bimbo. <laughs> wow, what's happening here? Keeps taking Hiragi away from me to spend time with her. Mi Wow, I must be what the fuck's happening? Me Sao snapped and be coming out of breath afterwards. I'm terribly sorry about your dilemma. I wish I could be more of help, but the only advice I can offer of you is to have to talk with the person, and try to straighten things out. Me whoops. Uh Miyuki, sorry, instead trying to calm the fangirl down. Oh, you can help alright, out of nowhere. Miss Sao took out some purple and fluffy something purple and fluffy, and I picture the faces making angry expressions printed on the front, and it was plastic on the outside. You can help me by bringing out your true feelings. Help me destroy Kunata Inzumi. Inzumi? How the hell did you write that? <laughs> Kanata Inzumi, the evil twin of Kanata Azumi. Izumi. This doesn't work if I can't remember her fucking last name. It's not Inzumi. Misao said slowly, approaching Miyuki with the garment in hand. Ah! Miyuki screamed her screams that go th out through the whole room. Oh, ah! A pair of eyes. Sh <laughs> Line! A pair of eyes shot open suddenly. Her sleep was interrupted by the feeling of a pair of fingers being stuck up her diaper. Kigabi shut up, ready to take guard and fight whatever was touching her, but soon found herself annoyed when she saw the person doing the touching. <laughs> You're a, a bit wet, but not in demand for a diaper change just yet. Kikami's tall, but because of magic, blue hair best friend mm, slash maid Konata told her in a gentle England accent, then patted her head. Now then, we shall we check your little sister sleeping right next to you? She said. She asked. Kigami looked over right and saw Tsukasa sleeping in the same crib next to her. She looked worn out as she was breathing hard like she was running a marathon. There on while sleeping. Konata reached over Kagami and slid down Sakasa's pajama bottoms, revealing that she was still wearing a diaper, dark diaper, and it was very, very wet to the point of leaking. Kagami was taken back by this and had some questions she wanted to ask at the moment, like why her sister was still wearing a diaper, dark diaper. But once again, the pacifier was stuck in 
cut Gabby's mouth to prevent her from speaking. It's Konata grabbed Tsukasa by her armpits. Ow. Fuck. And lifted her out of the crib, carried the sleeping girl to the changing table. Konata untapped the diaper and slid it from under Tsukasa's bottom. Then Konata reached under the changing table and took out a fresh diaper and some powder and wipes. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. Minuit, you're not going to put another diaper on my sister, are you? I think she's already traumatized with diapers by now. Kagami yelled through her pacifier, trying to get Kagami's attention. Konata was guessing Kagami was saying, ranting through her pacifier, and gave a simple answer. The reason I'm putting your sister in another diaper is to cancel out the negative side effects of the dark diaper. So, Ka Bad apple! <laughs> Tsukasa should have woken up by now, but she is still probably tired from battling with her true feeling and locking her magical powers. Did she even fight it? The kind of diaper you're wearing and the one I'm putting on Tsukasa now is the power to get rid of the harmful side effects that the dark diaper has given off. Wow, this is different. Could I explain while wiping Tsukasa's privates with the baby wipes? Wipes. She then unfolded the diaper and slid under Tsukasa's bottom, positioning it the right way. Konata then took a container of baby powder and sprinkled a vast amount of on Tsukasa's privates, then brought the diaper up the diaper between Tsukasa's legs and tapped it up. <laughs> I, is this a troll fic? Because this is getting fucking dumb. I guess we can leave the pajamas bottoms off. Tsukasa does look cute that way, and the diaper totally matches her personality. Konata joked, and Kagami also gave a smell giggle out of it. Kagami then picked up Tsukasa and carried her back over to the crib and laid her down again. She looked like she was sleeping peacefully, now having a good dream, even though she was already in one. Kagami looked at a st took a stuffed animal that was already in crib and placed it next to Kasa to Kasa. To to Kasa. I am expecting. Like I am surprised. Like is there any fan art of this? Cause this feels like it could bring up a lot of pictures. Particularly of Tsukasa. Kagami, I don't know, if you want to be silly. And Konata, well... I guess she could be in the shot. In the shot. I'm wondering, what do infantilists like? Mm. What do ones reading this like? Literally, I just typed in Konata Divert. I'll do that from time to time. I'm like, hmm, let's see if I can find a fan fiction. Any random bullshit. Now then, it's your turn, Kanata sung picking up Kagami and walking her over to the ch <sighs> 2 o'clock in the morning, great right expected for me. Ah. I'm changing table. Kanata used the same method she did with Tsukasa to change Kagami, but it came to powder her. Kanata used a power puff. <laughs> no. Power puff girls, no. Why have you turned such a great show into a bunch of ass wipes? Why am I finding this too funny? Ah, oh, powder puff. Kagami had to fight back to giggle as if he tickled the as the ticking feeling of the pow powder puff glided across her skin, making her feel even more babyish than ever. Kagami's diaper was taped up, and she was left blushing. Lastly, Kanata wiggled her fingers around the clothes Kagami was wearing, lit up, blinding her. What? Kagami opened her eyes. She found that the pacifier was out of her mouth and hanging from a ribbon that was clipped on to what she was wearing. Kagami looked down and saw what she was wearing covering her whole body except her hands. But she was still wearing the mittens. She was wearing a purple-footed sleeper with pink lining with the word writing Akachan Kawai printed on the front. Kagami glared at Kanata, who had a mischie mischievous look on her face. Um. Ah, I think this is the first time I can actually use my joke. Kawai. I say Kawai. <clears throat> Kagami then looked at Konata with a serious expression on her face. Listen, I have some questions, and you have the answers I'm looking for, so I need you to answer them for me, Kagami demanded. Would you like to talk about this before or after your bottle, Kanata asked. Line! 
A couple minutes later, Kagami was sitting in her crib with her back against the bars while Tsukasa was sleeping with her head in Kagami's lap. Okay, first question. Why did Miss... Mrs. Kruyo kidnap my sister and put her in one of those dark diapers. First, let me start by saying that the people who are brought in this world don't stumble here by accident, Kanata replied. People who have it rough in real world want to escape reality, come to this world unknowingly by dreaming at night. In Sakasa's case, she had it rough in the real world because other people looked down on her and she wished she could escape all that. So when she fell asleep that night, she ended up here. And because of her troubles, Miss Kuryo- Fuck's sake, man! Fuck's sake! It's Koi! Jesus! Kuryo kidnapped Tsukasa so she, she could use the di diaper to bring out the true feelings. Her true feelings. How did she get here then? Did someone from this world take her from the real world and bring her here? Sorry, that question is what I would like to know. I don't know how exactly other people get into this world. I just know that they end up here because they're troubled, Konata responded. I didn't tell you this before, but I didn't bring you to the world of dreams myself. I found you lying on unconscious somewhere and you were fast asleep. I already knew what your troubles were, so I created this nursery f nursery for you, so you could deal with them. Because if other people, because if other people, the dark Kure witch, the dark witch Kurio would have gotten to you before. Ah, shit! There goes the stand. Ah, uh, fuck! Yeah, give me a minute. I've got some issue. There we go. Good go. That Kurio. Would have gotten to you before I did. She would have put you in a dark diaper, and you would have been an evil version of magical baby girl Kimmy by now. Now, now, is this part of like how magical baby girl Kimmy is even supposed to work? Was that even ever explained? Like thing, hello, logic, brains, 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 brains. You found me here, Kagami said. Kagami was taken aback. I thought you told me that you granted my wish because you were. It was somewhere deep inside my heart. I wanted this to happen. Yes, you wanted to be like a magical baby girl Kimmy. Were your true feelings? Well, what the fuck? Yes, you wanted to be like magical baby girl Kimmy. Were your true feelings? And when I told you that I could not have brought you to this world without you wanting it, I lied because I never told you that there was another world outside this room, which I really meant was that I could not have created this nursery without you really wanting it. This room was made from your desires, and that's why I called it your own world. Can I explain? Wait a minute, I thought you told me the first time I came here. This, is, this was all a dream and none of it was real. That was partially the truth. Think of you as having two bodies. First is your normal body, which you use during the day at home sleeping in your bed right now. And second, your dream world body, which you are using right now. So yes, you are dreaming, but the danger of this world's are real. You just said other people. Does this mean there are other people in this world doing the same thing Miss Kurio did to Sukasa the other night? Yes. There are others like her in this world. And they are just as dangerous. I've been coming to this world every night for a while so I can fight on equal ground with them. But for beginners like you and Sukasa who just unlocked your magical powers, try to avoid fight try to avoid a fight at all costs. And that hit you struck Dark Witch Kurio with last time was a lucky shot. But will probably be your last. But why are they doing this? She's our teacher in the real world, and now we have to fight her in this one? Miss Curio wasn't always like that, Kanana said sadly. She, along with the other people in this world, were once normal, but were forced to wear dark diapers, and their true feelings brought out, and the other was were taken over by them. Unlike Tsukasa, they never came to terms with their true feelings, and now being controlled by them and serving the person who created the dark diapers. So they're possessed now! Okay. Where were we going with this? Fuck. I seem to have missed something. Oh, there we go. So I was looking and then I lost my line and now I hear it. Control is there. That's horrible! They're like slaves then! Kagami was shaking with anger now. Who is doing all this? Who created the dark drivers and forced me to <laughs> How can I say this seriously? She calls herself Kamisama. Dunno, got some man's ass. That's all I know about her, Kagami Snap. So you mean you tell me that's some bitch named Kamisama who thinks she was really as a god wanting to make my sister as part of her demented army? Also, that's sick. Until they find her, I'm gonna kick her ass and make her pay big time for messing with my sister and friends, she screamed. 
Kagami was about to continue yelling, but her, but her pacifier was placed in her mouth. She looked down and saw Tsukasa was the one who did it. Please calm down, sis. You look really scary right now. Tsukasa was trembling. Kagami saw the fear in Tsukasa's eye and managed to calm herself down by sucking on the pacifier in her mouth. Zawi Tsukasa, Kagami said apologetically through the pacifier. Please don't worry. There's a, way, there's a way we can solve the problem with who yeah, people have been taken over by their true feelings, kind of said. If you can defeat them and take their dark diapers off, then put them in the diapers you two are wearing, then their true feelings will be powerless to control their actions. Why is this thing become so serious? I thought this was dopey as shit. Really? Kai said with a muffled through the pacifier, then spat it out. Why dose? Oh, <laughs> this has to do with diapers. And the mag... Yeah, magical baby girl Kimmy. I want to know that. I mean, it's all too much of a coincidence. That mostly everything that's happened so far is so related to magical baby girl Kimmy Maga. In the second chapter, Kimmy wakes up to find her sister mysteriously brought to the other world, and there's someone else who knew were working for the evil team. In my case, Tsukasa was brought here, and our teacher is the evil villain. I thought it was strange also. I was surprised Tsukasa was here and thought the same thing. I think most of the stuff that happens in this world will also be based off the manga. What the So this world is based around infantile Jesus! I would like to be able to go to sleep without ending up being in a world where I have to get where I end up getting diapered by some random weird ass shit. Like wouldn't you like to be able to go to a world where all your dreams come true? But then you figure out what the fuck is this thing falling on my desk? Alright. Um, then you find out that you're gonna end up being wearing diapers or at least attacked by a bunch of women trying to push diaper. Ooh. Actually, that's probably the weirdest thing. Um. Tsukasa. So! That means that we can step. We can be one step ahead to saving anyone who comes to this world, also, Kagami cheered. One more thing. The first time you said something about a magical timer, you always knew that this world was going to end for the night. How did you? No. For some strange reason, we can only come here to this world between 12 o'clock a.m. and 12.01 a.m. So meaning that this world starts at 12 o'clock a.m. Wait a minute, it lasts for one minute. <laughs> what? It lasts for 24 hours? What? <laughs> it, either it either lasts for like one, one minute, or twenty-three hours and fifty-nine minutes. That is hilarious. So I mean, this world starts at twelve o'clock a.m. and ends at twelve o'clock a twelve o one a.m. So if you're not sleeping by then, then you won't be able to enter this world. You just slip through the night. I just recently discovered that one minute in the real world is six hours in this world. So that's one hour in this world for every ten seconds that goes by in the real world. Holy shit. I set this timer to tell when this world gets ready to end so we won't be surprised when we see everything around us going blank. Wow, no way, Kagami said happily. Next time I should be I should bring some I should be in some of my test books here so I can get some homework or extra studying done. Oh jeez, Kagami, we're in a magical world with magical powers and our friends are being controlled by a sociopath psychopath. And all you can think about is studying, Kagami complained. You really have no sense of adventure in your life, don't you? She teased. Oh shut up, Kagami retorted. Aw, is the baby getting cranky? Kagami teased again in a babyish voice. I think it's time for baby to have her bottle. Kanana made a large baby bottle magically appear in her hands. Tsukasa, would you like a, to bottle feel your sister now? Sure, Kona-chan. I've always wanted to try it, Tsukasa said, taking the bottle away from Konata. Like hell you are, Tsukasa screamed. I like the way she's not getting punished for saying hell. Kagami screamed, making Tsukasa cringe. I refuse to drink from that bottle again. And I refuse to allow myself to be bottle fed by my younger sister like that. Konata called Tsuku Tsukasa over to her and whispered something in her ear. Tsukasa then went back over to Kanata and looked her dead in the eyes. Kagami, you'll be a good girl and drink from your bottle, Tsukasa said sternly. Her right eye lit up and then a symbol that looked like two lightning bolts connected by each other. It shot us straight to... She's part of the... She's part of the Secret Service? Okay, everybody's Nazis now, what the fuck? Yes, Tsukasa will be a good girl and drink 
my bottle now, Kagami said, like she was in a trance. Minutes later, that when Kagami came to, she found herself lying on Tsukasa's lap, drinking it from the bottle she wore. She swore she was never going to drink from, and the bottle was almost empty. Tsukasa then sat Kagami up and patted her back until she let out a burp. Kagami glared at Konata and threw a tantrum. I hate you so much for that, I Kagami stopped when she suddenly heard, felt a shot pain in her head. She was wearing. She was hearing someone screaming for help and recognized the voice. Sis, what's wrong? Tsukasa asked worried. There's someone screaming for help! It sounds like it's coming from inside my head. Kagami held her head in pain. Someone, please help me, the voice yelled again. Oh no, that sounds like Miyuki, Kagami said. What, Yuki-chan, is that... is in trouble? We have to save her fast. Tsukasa said, help! Ah! Kagami, Yuki's voice disappeared. Yuki, no, Miyuki, Kagami screamed. No, what do we do now? They got Miyuki now, Kagami and Tsukasa were going to panic, not knowing what to do until Gonata took charge. <laughs> Well, if you listen, go, well, you calm down right now, Gonata yelled strictly. Both Kagami and Tsukasa were surprised to hear Gonata speaking in such a tone. Listen, both of you, now there's no time to be panicking. We will save Miyuki-chan, but you will need to keep calm and think about how we are going to save her. Now, Kagami, because you have the ability to cast spells, you were able to hear Miyuki-chan's voice. That lets us know she is still alright for the time being. Tsukasa being of your class, you'll be able, you're able to use magic, but you should be able to track Miyuki-san, so please do so. Konata instructed. Right, I will do my best. Tsukasa closed chains. Once again, she was wearing her her and pink white dress with black stockings, minus the diaper she was wearing, and her fans were on both sides. Tsukasa closed her eyes and concentrated real hard on searching for Miyuki. Hey, Konata, what's the difference between magic and spells in this world? Gagami asked. Spells mostly have to do with the elements like fire, thunder, ice, and wing, but magic is more s normal stuff, like when other Tsukasa dropped those stars on us and used, and she used Gius on you a minute ago to get you to drink from that bottle earlier. Oh, that's actually spelt right, apparently. What that was... What that was geese she used on me, Kigami was steaming her head while Kanata was getting a good laugh. No wonder why I did not remember anything. I found Yuki-chan. She's not far from here, Tsukasa stated. Why did my voice just change to that? Hey, that line isn't actually part of the text. Holy shit. Kanata's sword appeared at her side and armor covered her maid outfit. Kigami's clothes changed to the puffy, frilly, pink and white dress with a white heart-shaped apron in the front of her cat ears on the top of her head. Okay, girls, let's save Miyuki, Kanata hollered. Yeah, both Kagami and Tsukasa cheered the three left of the magical door and were off. Line! I am getting bored. Soon, after a short walk through a land of nothingness, Konata, Kagami, and Tsukasa... Wow, you would think that these things would grow. And Tsukasa reached another magical door just... What are you doing, you freaking cat? She saw it was... Blah, 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 blah. Uh, cool. Kagami searched around and saw no signs of Miyuki. All she saw was a game stone on the floor. Hiragi! A person hugged, hugged, tackled, glomped. Kagami to the ground. Yay, it's Hiragi. She finally made it. The person cheered. What the? Me, Sao? What are you doing here? I thought we were we were looking for Miyuki, not you. Kagami said, trying to pry the fang girl off of her. Kagami, get, get away from her now. Sis, look at what's sticking up from under her skirts, Kagami said. Kagami bent her head down and saw that Misao was wearing a di dark diaper. No, Misao, not you too, Kagami said, backing away in shock. Misao, snap out of it. You don't know what you're doing. Kagami shook the girl by her shoulders. What do you mean, snap out of it? I'm having a time of my life starting Kamasama right What the fuck? And soon you will, Misao froze. She felt something sharp and pointy poking the back of her head. It was Konata's sword. Why well, was getting in my way, you blue hair midget? Can't... I have some alone time with my dear Haragi, Miss Ow snapped. Miss Ow. She took a game controller pocket and started mashing down the buttons like she was playing a real game. Suddenly a giant toy looking robot burst out of the ground. If I can have my if I can't have my beloved Haragi, then no one can. Miss Ow pressed the A button on the controller and Jaira was through his fist at Kagami. Kagam num num. Kagami was too shaken to move as the robot fist got closer and closer. She she was seconds from being crushed until Konata stopped the gigantic fist with only just her sword. Crushing blade! Konata yells, her sword 
lit up glowing purple and she effortlessly smashed the robot's fist into tiny pieces. Now to finish this blade spear, Kanata then pointed her sword at the robot's head and blade extended going right to the robot's head, destroying it. No, my robot fighting game! How can you destroy it like that? We are both we're both gamers here, Miss Alwine. Yeah, but unlike you, I don't suck at every game I play. Now where now tell me where Miyuki is, Kanata demanded, pointing her sword at Miss Ao's neck. Suddenly Kanata was shot in the back with a rainbow like beam. Kanata like let out a papal scream as beams and energy destroyed all over Kanata's armor, leaving her only in a maze outfit. She fell to her knees like a ton of bricks. Damn, they data trained they data drained me. I'm back to level one. <laughs> Whatever dog <laughs> Balls. What am I freaking reading right now? The carpal tunnel in my left hand demands it. Mm. Back to level one. Kunata said weakly before falling over. No, Kunata Kagami screamed. Then she looked around in anger for the person who hurt her friend. Who did that? Come out and fight now, Kagami screamed. Sis behind you. Tsukasa yelled, Iron Fan Defense! Tsukasa used her fans to block some glowing arrows that were about to hit Kagami. It took you long enough. What in the world are you doing? Misao asked. A girl came out from the shadows. I'm terrible. Woohoo! Okay, just a minute. God, I want them to do two things. Play a little more quietly and not break the house. They don't do either. It took you long and fuck. A girl came out from the shadow. I'm terribly sorry. It took the other me a while to wet her dark diaper so I could come out of it, Miyuki said. She was carrying a bow and arrows and was wearing a red and white shrine maiden's outfit. But I data drain in Zumi san. In Zumi? In Zumi? Her name's actually. Wait a minute. Something's wrong there. I'm fucked. It's in Zumi, bitch! I win. I win. I win. I w Why are there a lot of modifications with her with He Hina 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 Hina? What no Ah fuck it. I don't even know what that other anime is that they keep getting compared with each other. <laughs> fuck it. Uh bada. So you are spelling the name wrong. What kind of fan are you if you can't even spell a character's the your favorite character's last name wrong? Right. No way, Yuki Chan was the one who hurt Kona Chan, but why? Tsukasa asked me, then clapped her hands. Wow, Tsukasa san, what a smart question. I thought you were going to ask me something dumb like, why is the sky blue? <laughs> no, Yuki Chan, why are you saying this? Tsukasa was getting ready to cry. Tsukasa, that is not the real Miyuki. You're just. Those are just your true feelings. The real Miyuki would never say stuff like that, Kigami said. But sis, if that really is Yuki Chan's true feelings. That must she that that she must really think that way about me. Uh no Tsukasa, everyone in the world has something that they keep burning down inside and don't want anyone else to see. Think about what happened when you true when your true feelings came out, Kigami said, patting her sister on the back. We need to help Miyuki come in turn come to terms with her true feelings and save her. Misawa stepped in front of the two girls. Two, you two won't be doing anything but Misawa slashed in the back with Kanara. She let out a painful scream and fell to the ground. Damn what a cheap trick ejecting someone from the behind. I won't forget you. I won't forget this. Just you wait. I'll get you back, Miss House said before disappearing from the room. Konata, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine, but almost all my skills are gone now. I'm like a newbie, just like you two, Konata said. But that's not important. We need to take down Miyuki san's true feelings and save the real one. Why save me? So you can use you. So you can use me as your walking dictionary constantly, asking me questions because you're all too lazy to look them up yourselves? Yuki-chan, Sakasa said synthet synthetically. Yuki-chan, I know how you feel. I went through the same thing, and I'm going to help you. Shoot. Ugh. Tsukasa waved her fans at Miyuki, sending golden stars raining down on top of her. Other Miyuki got up and shot an arrow at Tsukasa, but was blocked by Kagami's fireball. Kanata ran at the other Miyuki and saw her sword blocking every... With her sword blocking every arrow that was shot at her, other Miyuki stood back and pulled back her bow, taking aim. Burst shot! Miyuki cried, shooting a supper charged, supper charged arrow at. Yeah, I'm gonna fucking eat that arrow now. Kanata. Kanata jumped out of the way. The arrow had barely missed her, and she was stunned for a few seconds before getting up. Excuse me, there appears to be more damage on my hands. Damn. Man, my hands are really fucked up. Alright.
Other Miyuki had her attention towards Konata and Tsukasa the whole time and did not see Kagami coming from behind. Kagami shot other Miyuki in the back and dead with a fireball, making her stumble forward. <laughs> Konata ran. Harrison, why? Konata ran up and struck other Miyuki in the stomach with the handle of her sword, making her stumble back, and Tsukasa ended it with her star shower, pinning other Miku Miyuki to the ground. I was about to say her, call her Miku. Konata and Tsuk Speaking of Miku, do you remember the reference to, uh... To Miku in uh, Lucky Star, it's like one of the few ones I actually know about. Kona like things. Konan and Tsukasa were and had their weapons drawn at other Miyuki's neck, and Kagami charged up another fireball. No, I can't be defeated. I won't be your walking dictionary. Other Miyuki cried when someone touched her shoulder. It was the real Miyuki. How the fuck do they keep escaping? It's not all bad. I love it when my friends ask me trivial questions or something they don't know. It tells me that they can always depend on me for things that are. And that makes me very happy. The real Miyuki said happily. The other Miyuki saw the truth in, in her other self's eyes and c gave up. I'm sorry. I just didn't want you to use by these girls. They were always constantly bugging you about every little thing. I thought you hated that, other Miyuki cried. Miyuki hugged her, hugged, her, hugged her other self. It's okay. I'm glad to have them as my friends. With other Miyuki faded... With that, she said, she, other Miyuki faded back into the real Miyuki's heart, unlocking her magical abilities having the same power as self had, meaning she can suck the energy out of people. Miyuki then fell to her knees and was breathing hard and looked like she was ready to pass out. Oh no, Yuki-chan, are you okay? Tsukasa we need to get Miyuki-san back to the nursery and out of that diaper before the side effects kick in. And what are the side effects? Nah. After the battle was over, Miyuki was taken to the nursery and treated the harmful side effects of wearing a dark diaper. She was put into a regular diaper looked and Kagami was placed in the crib of rest. Kagami and Konata Tsukasa also rested until the time was up and the world of dreams ended once again send, sending each of them back to the real world and back into their real bodies. And that ends this chapter. Ugh. God, I need something to drink. Ow. Oh yeah, I guess I should end the recording as I listen to some shit. So, Kai, one, two, three, four, five, nine, signing.